Hi guys, it's Rick Baxter, Cost Control Software. Thanks so much for your interest in Manufacturing Plus. This is an add-on you'll see right here for Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central. So this is an add-on specifically designed for the manufacturing part of Dynamics 365 Business Central. Let me show you up here in the settings. If I go to my settings, it's a role center. We've added a role center and quite a few features. You'll see it on the list here. It's called Manufacturing Plus. And uh, I've got it uh, basically open right now on my screen here. This is what the role center looks like. And it's for manufacturing, it's really critical that your roll center is laid out in such a way that you have easy access to all the things that you need in manufacturing. So I'm going to create about four videos here that are going to take you through some of the key concepts of the Manufacturing Plus uh, functionality, as well as quite a bit of what Business Central Manufacturing does for manufacturing type companies. So let me start with this roll center. And you'll notice first uh, things like uh, inventory, product design, capacities, journals. These are all things that you're going to use on a regular basis for manufacturing. Now, not only that, you're going to also need access to customers, vendors, items, resources, work centers, machine centers, setting up locations. You need access to all that. So we wanted to have all of the typical things that a manufacturer needs access to handy right on the roll center. Now notice on the tiles, down here is what we call the tiles. We've even extended it. We've got simulated production orders, planned production orders, firm planned and released. The finished all production orders, I'll talk about that in a future video. As well as access to your sales side so that you're in manufacturing, you may need to do sales quotes, sales orders, sales invoices, all of that of, again right on your roll center and purchases. So if you're in the purchasing department and you need purchase orders, here they are right here. And all of these are just one click away. So if I just click on the um, sales orders, there's a list of my sales orders. If I go back, let's do that again. If I go to my release production orders, I've got, and I've only got six in my sample here, but uh, plenty enough to show you around the software today. So this is the layout of the um, Manufacturing Plus Roll Center. Okay, so that's the first thing that's important to have. Second thing is I want to get into product design. How do you design your finished good products and how quickly can you produce a, a, an item, a new item, especially a new item to go into uh, production? So let's uh, let's go into product design. I'm going to start with this video is kind of going to focus on product design section and then in some of the other videos I'll take you into sources of demand for the finished goods. I'll take you into, we'll spend quite a bit of time talking about production orders. They're very important to the process and then we'll wrap it up with the finished uh, production orders and the type of information that's captured when you complete a production order. So all of that is uh, going to be covered in probably about four videos here as we go through it. But let's start with the basics, which is product design, and let's start with the list of inventory items. So I'm going to go and bring up a list of items. And for this example, I really want to add a new item just so you can see it from scratch and how quickly we've got the system set up so that you can add uh, new inventory items. So let's go here is, uh, guess what, create a new entry. You just say new. It gives us the type of item. We're going to do a manufacturing uh, item, so we'll say that. Um, there is the part number for it. Uh, in fact, I'm going to write that down so I don't forget. 70061. Okay, the description is just going to be a finished good uh, number 101. Okay, is the item. And it's an inventory item. I don't, I, And I'm not going to put in much more than that. I just wanted to get something started for this item. Now, if you're manufacturing, one of the very first things that you need to do is create a routing and a bill of materials. And we're very aware of that requirement to start to set up the structure of your finished good item. 
So we wanted that highlighted here in the upper right hand corner. Even before we put in a picture of the item, I want to have the routing and I want to have the production bill of material. Now because this is a new item, I don't have one. But if I click okay, here, it says a routing header does not exist. Would you like to create one? Yeah, I do. So I'm going to just say yes. And first thing it's going to bring up is, whoops, didn't do that quite right. Hold on. So I'm going to say yes, and there we go. So here is a here's the the header of the uh, routing, and all we need to do is now add in the line items for this bill of material down here. It's under notice. It's under development. The status of this is under development. So we're going to just add some operations. Let's edit this thing. We're going to put in operation, uh, I'm going to put in four operations, and you're going to bear with me a minute here. I'm going to put in operation 10, 20, 30, and 40. Okay, 30 and 40. So we're going to have four operations to our sample here. They're all going to be in work centers, and I'm going to start with work center 400, which is my uh, machining department, and then it's going to move to uh, 300, which is my painting department. And then my item is going to go to uh, 100 for assembly. And then finally, I need to get it packed and shipped. So it's going to go to 200, which is where we have our packing department. Okay, pretty straightforward. Yours will be, of course, whatever yours are. But uh, there's the setup. And we'll want to establish some setup times and run times for this item. So I'm just going to use some examples here. Let's say the setup time for machining is 30 minutes, uh, painting department's 20 minutes, the assembly apartment is, uh, let's say, 60 minutes, and packing 10 minutes. Okay, I like to have a little setup time, and then how much runtime each on these parts that we're producing. So let's keep it fairly simple. Um, we'll say uh, two minutes uh, each, and then uh, three minutes for the painting, uh, that's each and then on the assembly we can do one per minute and packing at one a minute as well okay actually let's make those little f I'm gonna make the packing faster so I'm gonna say we can do eight a minute okay um there we go so that is the setup of my my routing those are the steps now all I have to do is come in here and say certify this and then go back to uh, let's go back up here to our inventory item and you'll see now I've established the first routing for this uh, part number 7061 let's do the same thing on bill of materials now the key here is first of all the ease of access to this information and this is what the manufacturing plus brings to the table is how quickly you can get to this bill of material information so I'm going to click this it says do you want to add the bill of material I'm going to say yes we're going to have it under development and we're going to put in some inventory items let's go and edit this thing so uh, we're going to have some items and the first item number I've got one sample set up to use for you here is uh, 1100 that is the front wheel okay and it's one and I'm just going to do a few here just to give you an example uh, 1200 is the a back wheel so we're going to have a front wheel and a back wheel and we'll have just one of those and then we'll need some component parts as well such as a uh, lamp 1500 okay and we're also going to need some spokes we can pick it that way off the list whoops one each on those okay no on spokes I'm going to need 30 okay so now a couple things about the way I laid out this 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 bill of materials first of all these are subassembly items. And the reason I know that these items that I selected here are subassembly items is because I brought in a column over here. This is new. Now, if you don't have 
um, manufacturing plus installed in your business central this this column won't be here okay so I'm going to point out some of the differences as we go along and the concept is I want to be able to view that bill of material so let's take this back wheel if I click on view bill of material then I've kind of drilled down into the subassembly of that component item and you'll notice even here in the back wheel it's made up of a uh, bill of material for 1250 and I can view that sub assembly and see it's made up of an axle back wheel and a socket back so these are the items in those did you see how I did that I kind of moved down through the bill of material without really having to leave the primary uh, inventory item okay which you can't do that out of the base product so that's some of the things that you get when you purchase the manufacturing plus addition to uh, the Dynamics 365 Business Central. Okay, so that's in there. One more thing we certainly want to do is certify it. And we'll go back here and go back here to the uh, items. So let's go back. Uh, I've got too many things open here. So back here on the item card, now it's got the production bomb and the routing. Now you'll notice I could have versions here. I'm not going to go that far in this, in this video, but you can have... Uh, versions to those bills of material and versions to those routings that you use in your production. Okay, so we now have this finished good all in here, good to go. I'm going to uh, leave the item card just back up here. And now we should have on our, if we do a search for our FG, no, well, yeah, so there it is. There's our, I just typed FG and it found my FG 101 item which is part number 70061 okay so very quick the thing I wanted you to see there okay the concept here is how quick it is to add this new inventory item okay there's no quantity on hand for it but you get the idea of how quick I've been able to add that into the um, master system now let's take the this is product design so I want to go just a little bit further here with you. And I want to go to one thing here under process that I want to call your attention to called multi-lot cost view. And what this allows you to do is see the different lot sizes and the costs of those lots. Let's open this up. And I'm going to put some in. So I'm going to put one in. I'm going to put 10 if I make 10 of them. And as I go... What I want you to see here, let me do one little thing here. Let me refresh this. Oh, I didn't have any cost on those items. Okay, so uh, and I'm going to show you another example here in just a second. So I'm going to put in 100 and I'm going to put in 1,000 as well. Okay, and what I was expecting to see, but I think the items that I have didn't have any cost on them yet. So let's go back and I'll show you the concept here. Let's go up to... Uh, Go to part number 1,000, 10,000, which is my bicycle right here. And on this one, let me do that same thing. Look at the multi-lot view. I've got this one set up. You'll see that here's the cost values. And you'll see as I make more, as I make 1 or 50 or 100 or 500 or 1,000, the cost is going down. And that's because of the setup time is being kind of amortized over time. And this lets me see very visually what the costs are. I can assign margins to that, and I can then calculate the suggested price at each of the uh, price points, depending on how many units the customer buys. Okay, And you can transfer those prices to the uh, contract amount. You can actually see it here. So this is the uh, sales price kind of matrix within your uh, Business Central software so that you can see that if any customer buys this quantity, let's say 1000 then their price is going to be $604.85. So this gives you that breakout and it lets you see what the pricing matrix will be for those inventory items. Okay, uh, we're good there. So let me pause just a second.
Okay, I want to do one last thing here for uh, before we leave this section on product design, and that's to see the results of the product. And I'm a little concerned about the uh, costing that I have, but let's uh, let's see what happens. So I'm going to go back to our roll center, and I want I want you to understand the importance of simulated production orders. I think these are very powerful tools for you to use. So I'm going to put in a new one. So I've got one in here for a touring bicycle, but I want to put in one for our uh, part number seven. Uh, what was the part? Seven zero. Okay, so we're going to assign the new number, and we're going to pick that seven zero zero seven zero zero six one. Okay, there's our new finished good item, and we're going to make a quantity of a hundred of that item and now watch what happens so to, to basically I want the lines to come in so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually re um, do a refresh of this item and this refresh is kind of like manually going and grabbing the the routing and the components I'm going to pull all of those in and extend based on the quantity so I'm taking that quantity of a hundred and extending that information in here so there we go. So there's our 100. It uh, shows me the, uh, certainly shows the um, the starting date and the ending date. Oh, I didn't really change the date too much here. I could have done that. But uh, notice too, the cost information is here. The material cost, the capacity cost, that's the labor. You can see it as well up here in the right, upper right side in the expected cost fact box. This is something, again, some of these things I'm showing you here are things that we've added to the Manufacturing Plus feature set just to make information more readily available. You should not have to dig down to find out what the total cost is, what the cost per unit is, what the capacity need is, capacity in hours, and the parts per hour. I want all of that right there on the screen, not really having to dig uh, to get that information. Let's go a little bit further on this, and I want to look at the lines. I'm going to go down to the routing, so uh, just basically one click. This is the routing. that. This is what we just set up. Okay, I just set this up, and now it's copied the routing in here. It has brought in the setup time. The cost per um, unit is brought in, and with this actual input quantity of 100, it can then multiply times the cost per unit. If I see the extended a little bit over here, you'll see here's where it's getting the expected operational cost. It's just multiplying times the 100 and adding in the uh, some time for setup as well. Okay, and of course the components are doing the same thing. If we look at the, where are they here? Here's the components. This is the front wheel, back wheel, lamp and sockets uh, spokes. And it's taking the 100, okay, and times and comes up with the expected uh, quantity. This is probably a little different because I bet there's a, um, on the spokes there's probably a, um, a scrap factor that has added in some extra items. Oh, and notice too, this is set to forward flush. These others are set to manual flush. Okay, so you can set your flushing methods as well uh, per inventory item as far as how it's to come in. And then the cost is shown here as well. So we know what the cost is. And that's quite frankly how it has back here calculated the material cost for us because it knows the cost of each of the components within that bill of material. Again, the thing with the Manufacturing Plus is the layout of this screen. The ease of getting to your routing, the components, the statistics on board here, your material cost, and eventually we're going to start seeing the actual cost uh, on a finished uh, production order, actual material cost. Now this is just simulated, so there is no actual cost yet. But if this rolls into an actual production order, then you would start to see the actual cost. Okay, so that's that's a little quick uh, start on this set of videos. I wanted to give you just a sense for the product design portion of it. And next we're going to get into the uh, demand for the finished goods. What can create demand? And we'll show that to you next. Thanks so much.